Hi, a really nice thing to talk about is the impact of intermolecular forces. Really, why do we learn about intermolecular forces? The reason is, is they have huge significance and impact on really everything we do. Um, so here is the driving principle. As you increase the intermolecular forces, you have greater intermolecular forces, stronger intermolecular forces. That means that at the very foundation, you have a greater attraction between molecules, that um, the molecules are going to be attracted one to another um, with a greater force, a greater potential energy. That outflow of that greater attraction sits right here. As you increase intermolecular forces, you have an increase in viscosity. Um, and so that means a higher viscosity, the substance will move slower because it's more attracted to the molecules. This great attraction to one another um, fights against gravity, uh, forcing it to move. Uh, you have a greater surface tension. Um, so uh, like when you have water and you accidentally fill the water at the very, very top, almost going to spill over, it makes a bubble. That surface tension is because of the strong intermolecular forces of water. Um, a greater hardness. You also increase boiling point and melting point. Very common question right here. I could look at coconut oil. It's this white substance in my pantry right now, and I can look at canola oil. It is a liquid, liquid golden substance in my pantry right now. I'll tell you which one has the greater intermolecular forces, coconut oil, because it is a solid at room temperature. It has a higher melting point than the canola oil, so it has greater intermolecular forces. Um, capillary action, as you increase intermolecular forces, greater ability to um, adhere, be attracted to the sides of a container and move. Now, as you increase intermolecular forces, you decrease vapor pressure. So you'll recall vapor pressure is when you have a liquid substance. So let's say that this is water and we're going to evaporate it. So we get these little water molecules like this. Those gas molecules, that's the vapor pressure pushing back down against that water. That's vapor pressure. Now, if you have strong intermolecular forces, there's a greater ability to attract the molecules. Fewer molecules will evaporate, which means you'll have a lower vapor pressure. A high vapor pressure means low IMF. The molecules easily change phase to a gas. So you have a lot of molecules that would be a high vapor pressure. So the greater the intermolecular forces, the more likely that substance will stay as a liquid, meaning fewer molecules as gases, a lower vapor pressure pushing against it. Intermolecular forces, um, they really keep the substance as a solid and a liquid. And if we compare those two phases, solid and liquid, the solid has greater intermolecular forces because it holds the molecules in a fixed shape. The molecules can't translate and move around um, one another. So another great takeaway, as you increase intermolecular forces, you have a solid. Less intermolecular forces means that you have a liquid. You have to put energy into all of, all of these molecules to change any of this. Um, and the greater the intermolecular forces, the greater the energy you have to put into them. Kind of interesting. So great impact in our lives for intermolecular forces. Okay, good work, have a good day, thank you.